Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is Ship Updates. And today we got a couple of updates. They're little bits, like little snippets that we got off of ATV. Um, dealing with the Hammerhead and of course the Eclipse. And so we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about both of those ships and uh, you know showing the clip. So first off, let's look at the Hammerhead. Now we got these very brief shots of the interiors of the hammerhead and of course the cockpit. Note the command seats and the fairly obstructionless view in the cockpit of the hammerhead looking very, very good, especially with the visibility down below, making it a lot easier for you to see where you're landing if you have to take it down onto a landing pad, a space station or a planet. Now, much like the Carrick and the Constellation that also have very similar views to that, it's one of the big bonuses and one of the strengths, I think, in the Hammerhead design is it's a spaceship that's... It's not so much like a lot of the ships in Star Citizen are almost designed like planes with a plane in mind. And, you know, with that ship, you can now see that this is a vehicle that is intended to, you know, take off and, you know, land vertically. This isn't just something that would go down a runway and take off. And that's kind of one of, like, the important things. I think one of the things that's going to kind of, you know, sway a lot of these arguments when dealing with cockpits and restricted views. I mean, certainly when you look at where the crosshairs are on the cut list and the fact that, pretty much the dashboard is sitting up there at the 50% mark almost of the screen. I mean, if you sat in your car and you, you know, kind of scooch down in your seat so that your dashboard is just about eye level, could you drive your car like that? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's one of those difficult things to explain to people, but when you kind of really give them real world physical examples, they start to go like, Oh yeah, I can. And so you know, it, it just becomes kind of one of these things that as the newer ships seem to come out, some of them seem to embrace this, and yet some of the other ships do not. And it always ends up being kind of like a design feature discussion, like, oh, it's a balance, you know. Not really. I mean, you want to balance a ship, balance its weapons, balance its shields, balance its speed. Blinding the pilot isn't just, isn't balance, and it's not like... You know, oh, well, it's subjective because I think it looks really cool. And it's just, no, <laughs> it's it doesn't make any logical sense. You know, it's just impeding your ability to operate the vehicle for subjective aesthetics when objectively it shouldn't be there in the first place. It should be far lower down, but we're not going to dwell on it and we're going to move on. Now, next up, we saw the Eclipse, which is, of course, the stealth bomber. This was a big hit when it was sold, and a lot of people picked this ship up, and it looks like it's moving along fairly well in development, though they did say that they restarted production on it. My guess would be that probably because they were able to squeeze the Nox Q into 3.1, they probably just set it aside for, whatever, a few weeks to kind of polish off and finish the Nox Q, get it into 3.1 because the opportunity was there, and then to return to the Eclipse without really setting back its production or its release date because realistically it would still be in one of the quarterly patches and maybe they felt that they were far enough along that they were just like, well, if we lose a month, it's still going to be in the next quarterly patch, so really no big deal. And we can manage to get an extra ship into this patch everyone's a winner in that case so hopefully it doesn't slow down its production but i think that the eclipse is probably along with the hammerhead is going to be one of the big monsters in the future of star citizen it's going to be one of the big ships that you're going to find a lot of people going after in the pu whether you purchase it in game using in-game money or people who may pick it up at the anniversary sale when it becomes available again or once it's flight ready and there will obviously at that point be a sale for that ship. Though its popularity and its price have increased drastically since the initial sale. Now recently on the Piracy Show we had a bit of a talk about stealth and uh, you know I kind of addressed a comment about wouldn't it be cool 
if there was a cloaking device, say, on a specific version of the Herald that was built around the idea of infiltration. Now, of course, a cloaking device is a pretty popular idea. Now, you really can't throw a rock in the sci-fi universe and not find a cloaking device in some way on some show or in some movie, or at least in a franchise. It may not appear in every show, but you generally you hear about it here and there. And it's generally a plot device used to, you know, either the heroes or the villains, giving them a certain advantage in a certain situation. But when you look at it in video games, sometimes its reception is is mixed um certainly i'm a big fan i you know when star trek online first came out i was pure klingon all the way i loved playing the klingons and that's going all the way back to when klingons didn't even have pve content when the only thing that we could level up as a klingon in was basically random battlegrounds pvp battles that was it and I leveled up in that system, so <laughs> to do that in those days in that game, you know I love my cloaking devices. And <laughs> beyond that, I mean, in, in World of Warcraft, love playing my rogue in, what is it, uh, the Old Republic? Uh, <laughs> Smuggler, the, jeez, uh, what was the Imperial, Imperial Agent? The, uh, the stealth version of that, not the sniper. And of course, the Jedi Shadow and the Sith Assassin. I love playing those classes. Anything with stealth is something that I'm always a huge fan of. And even within Chris Roberts' own universes that he's created, there is a precedent for that. Now, I can't speak about a specific cloaking ship in Wing Commander because my Wing Commander knowledge is... Well, it's fairly rudimentary, to be honest. I was always a bigger fan of Privateer. Um, but if I remember correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but in Wing Commander 3, weren't the Kilrothi using some type of cloaking torpedo that would pop in and out of stealth? So it would kind of adjust its course and then start heading towards its target, and it would stealth up again, and then it would pop out and you would kind of make whatever course adjustments it needed to make and then it would stealth up again and one of your missions was you had to shoot them down whenever they popped up and then later on it became a fixture in the wing commander movie that those things popped up there as well i mean yeah i correct me if i'm wrong in the comments below i know i saw it in the movie but i'm pretty sure it was in a mission in wing commander 3 as well now Within the Star Citizen universe, we've heard about components and making adjustments to components of our ships. The shields, the engines, the radar, everything. You know, we've heard about how these things can be adjusted one way or another. And that we may indeed get upgrades or be able to research upgrades through use of certain ships or facilities to maybe make changes to some of these systems. We've never really gotten full details on a lot of those things. So with the, you know, the quote unquote stealth components that are available, not just for the stealth ships, but for other ships as well. It's conceivable that, I mean, even if it is a functionality just tied to the stealth button on your ship, which every ship pretty much has, even the Reclaimer has, <laughs> which it's kind of hard to hide that thing. I mean, it's pretty darn huge, but Oh, nice flying there. Okay, wait. Let, let me hide that for a second. So yeah, and then there's this other thing here, the Electro Skin Hull. Now this is one of the skins that has been around for a long, long time. Don't look at anything else that CIG sold for ships. And one of the things that says is, can switch hull appearance at the flick of a switch. I don't know, is that... How is that going to work out in the universe? I'm not sure, but could that be like some kind of adaptable paint job on your ship that allows you to change the base color of your ship at the flick of a switch to maybe help it blend in in certain environments? I don't know. I mean, you know, realistically, you can't really kind of go to the devs and say, hey, you know, that thing that you talked about or sold four or five years ago, can you give me the full rundown on exactly how it's going to work in the finished game, please? 
they'd probably be like, yeah, why don't we kind of wait till we're a little bit closer and then we'll kind of give you an idea of exactly how that's going to work out. But I mean, that's a possibility that you could change the color of your ship as well, I guess, to suit whatever environment you're operating in to allow yourself to better blend in visually with the background. So, I mean, it's kind of possible, technically, that maybe through some keyboard shortcuts and the basic stealth button and how you set up your ship, that for all intents and purposes, a cloaking device could exist in the Star Citizen universe, or they could outright just make one. Now, of course, yeah, you're going you're gonna to run into some people who are going to outright look at it and say, oh, that's a griefing tool. We don't need that in this game because people are just going to use that to grief. But then there are other people as well. I think a lot of people are going to look at something like that and say, you know what, that's actually something that would come in pretty handy. What if I have to get into Vanduul space, but my whole fleet isn't around me and I just have a mission to go pick up or go scan this one thing. If I got a cloaking device, maybe it'll make it a little bit easier for me to get in there and do this thing on my own. Or maybe you do want to like run some kind of infiltrator missions, whether it's against the criminal side or the legal side of the star citizen universe so i mean i think there's probably a lot of people who would look at it and see it as a valuable tool to add to the game but then you know cig may want to may say pretty much that yeah you, we want you to have something like that but we want it to be not so much all related to just one component on your ship but rather related to your skill as a pilot and you know your own ability to make all these little adjustments to your ship through various systems to kind of create that effect rather than just having one system that just blanket gives you that effect you know what i mean realistically i mean even though it really isn't all that fleshed out right now the idea of the basic stealth button in our ships I mean, that lets you make adjustments to your power core. It lets you pull the energy settings down, power down your engines to a certain degree. So even though you can still fly, you can't quantum. And it also takes your weapons down so that your rate of fire is lower. I think that when CIG gets to fully flesh out that system, I mean, if you can do that in concert with uh, maybe possibly being able to adjust the color of your ship to allow it to better blend in with the background yeah, the possibility is definitely there for not just a flat out cloaking device but just for players to manipulate the current stealth system with some adjustments to pretty much create a cloaking device effect in the game of course we have to wait uh this is going to be a down the road thing but i think we're going to start to see the first rudimentary steps over the next year towards possibly seeing something like that but it's going to require a lot of experimentation and a lot of obsessive gamers kind of sitting there and going like well what if i do this what if i adjust this and what if i can actually go in and change the stealth button so that it doesn't just make its baseline changes that it's programmed to make what if i can actually set all the different settings so I can even dial things down even further to make kind of like a stealth infiltration ship. And obviously a ship that is baseline built for stealth will probably perform better, but who knows how far we can take each individual ship. So as these ships kind of come into the game, ships like the Eclipse, but we already have ships like the Ghost and the Saber, and as the game systems come online and a lot more modules come online, we'll be able to flesh these ideas out a whole lot more. And then, who knows where that will take us so it's a possibility and certainly the eclipse is something that i know a lot of people are looking forward to and uh, just another avenue to kind of explore these ideas and see what's detectable and what's not in the universe but of course you know a lot of this relates to the proper scanning mechanics that we need to get implemented in game which aren't there yet so hopefully at some point soon, we'll see all these components and we'll be able to make a real call on this. But it's going to be something that'll be very interesting to see, I think. Anyways, that's enough of my rambling. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday. See ya.
Thank you, thank you for watching. So, so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.